Did you know that despite assembling over 80% of the entire world's pens, it wasn't until 2017 that China was able to manufacture its own working ballpoint pen? That's right. Despite the fact that the ballpoint pen was invented in 1888, it took China decades to be able to make one of their own. Now, that sounds hard to believe. I mean, China assembles nearly 40 billion pens per year. Well, despite the fact that most of the world's pens are assembled in China, the tip and socket that form the ballpoint itself was too complex for the country's steel industry to manufacture. For decades, Chinese factories were forced to import the ballpoint tips from countries like Japan and Germany before assembling them all together into a finished product that you could actually write with. In fact, once China finally did obtain the ability to construct the ballpoint on a ballpoint pen, the country's communist-run state media went ecstatic. Now, you might be thinking, Nick, what's the big deal? Countries import things all the time without actually manufacturing certain parts. But this wasn't a question of whether or not they could do it and just chose not to. They didn't have the capability. But with over 3,000 companies in China that manufacture pens, how could not a single one develop the technology to create a pen tip until 2017? Well, it's all because of motives and incentives. And that's because these companies ultimately only have one customer they have to please. And that is the Communist Party of China. And the CCP's central planners, who are effectively in charge of managing the entire country's economy, place very little emphasis on things like innovation or R&D, the very things necessary to keep your company going and creating new technology. But the problem wasn't just with the goals of China's central planners, but rather with central planning itself. And here's how. Consider this fact. While Chinese companies were content to simply buy foreign-made ballpoint tips or manufacture cheap knockoffs that never actually worked, it was only after the Premier of China himself tried using one of these knockoff pens and discovered that they were terrible that the poor quality of Chinese-made ballpoint pens suddenly became a problem for the industry. And almost overnight, a problem that millions of people had been pointing out for years immediately became a national crisis. Not because the market was responding to the desire of millions of Chinese consumers who hated using the country's domestically made ballpoint pens, but simply because of the desire of one powerful government official. And while Chinese state-controlled media can claim that the government's five-year plan to develop a working ballpoint pen tip is an example of the successes of the CCP's centrally planned economy, the truth is, is that if China's economic decision-making was left in the hands of the tens of millions of consumers who use pens on a daily basis, rather than just one or two government officials, the country could have developed its own ballpoint pen decades earlier because the broader market would have been in a position to demand one. And more importantly, it would have been in a position to reward any company that could meet that demand.